Good evening. I'd like to open up the meeting of the Asbury Park City Council Wednesday, March 16, 2016. Council Member Clayton? Here. Council Member Kendall? Here. Council Member Warner? Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Here. Mayor Moore? Here. Please rise for a silent prayer or moment of reflection, please. Flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. As to comply with the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, Public Law 1975, adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Trust, the coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 6, 2016, and posted on the bulletin board the same date. All notices are on file with the city clerk. Matters by council? Joe? Um, just one thing I wanted to update the council on uh, at the Wesley Lake Commission meeting last night. There's been an ongoing conversation about the treatment of pond weed in Wesley, in Wesley Lake. And the commission is meeting. There's been two things that they've been discussing, two ways to treat it. One is a harvester to actually physically remove the pond weed. The other is the spraying of the pestilence of the herbicide, which happened last year. The price difference is about double for the harvester, unless the county has one, and we're not sure if the county has one, that's actually in working order. So. So spraying last year was incredibly effective. It's about $10,000 to spray, and it's about $20,000 to do the harvesting of it. And uh, I just want to put that on our radar because I know um, the commission last year asked the two towns to split the bill for that, and yet I anticipate that's going to be the situation again. Um, so those are the two options that they've been looking at. And uh, the harvester is a better option. It's much more expensive. Um, so that's an update from Jason? Yes. This should take a couple minutes. As most of you know, uh, there's been a recall on me, but I'm not here to talk about the recall. I'm going to give you a few examples of what's been happening around, but I really want to talk about uh, a certain individual. If Sunday before the parade started, this individual came up to me and he he was from out of town, and he said, uh, you guys are doing a fine job, and I'm planning on moving to Asbury. But he said, uh, how about this recall thing? And I said, I'm not li at liberty to talk to you about it. All right, he said, um, well, you guys just follow the policy of Ocean Township. You know, the people really care about this. I said, well, you're welcome to come and speak to the council or speak to, speak to the people, the residents of Asbury Park. Uh, Ocean Township, what they did was they had, I think a couple of years ago when they was, they didn't want domes, a dorm, a dorm on, on Locust Drive so that they put up petitions, they put up signs and everything. And I told him, hey, look, you're welcome to come. Looking around, he's not here. But the individual that, that, that really stuck in my mind wasn't me. It was our mayor. And he, was, he mentioned that there's going to be a recall in April, uh, maybe May or April. And I'm saying, what? And then yesterday I heard the same thing. And it really upset me. Because I, I sit down and question myself. And John, I apologize. I should have told you about it. And I hope I'm not embarrassing you. But it really made me sick to my stomach. And I heard it yesterday. And I'm saying, now how in the world can these people recall someone that knows the in and out of the city, like not too much of us know the history of Asbury Park. How can someone that was on the Board of Education, the president of the Board of Education, when his children was growing up and he spent time there, now he's spending time, he's in City Hall every day or four out of five days a week. Uh, it's just a lot of examples I can just give you. Um, he, this individual, welcome people in his house. He gives out his personal telephone number. He tells you, don't call me mayor, because he's not on the Eagle Trip. And I'm saying, 
as people in Asbury Park, you don't want, I think it's only right to really stand up for our mayor. And we have to start, we talk about it, but I think we don't do enough about it. And I think, I, I can't give you a whole lot of ideas on how you should go about it, you gotta go with your own heart. Mm -hmm. But our mayor, have, do, he goes out of his way. He invite even his enemies, what I mean by the enemies, people that, that he ran against over his house. And I, I, I truly believe we got the best person here and if you just stop and think about, I'm not criticizing any other mayor or any other council, but I feel that the people that we have here is in the right, is moving in the right direction. And I feel that we have to start supporting one another in order to keep this town moving. Thank you. Jesse, thank you. Amy? Yep. No. In the council session? I don't have, I don't have no, no, a. Right now. Okay. I have, uh, and again, Jesse, thank you very much. Uh, I have three positive issues, and that's nice in Asbury Park to have positive issues. Uh, New Jersey was declared a disaster aid area for the January 22, 24 winter snowstorm. Our staff with the OEM director, Derek Giverson, and the city manager, and finances are on top of that, and we're hoping for a 75% reimbursement. On January 31st, on the Asbury Park Boardwalk, there was a rally to stop offshore drilling in the Atlantic. And as a result, the federal government re removed the Atlantic Coast from the leasing program, keeping New Jersey's $40 billion a year tourism industry out of a man-made potential tragedy. So that's fantastic. And the next thing is a personal thing, and I'm going to hand out, I'm going to put on my Asbury Park Fishing Club hat, a new one, new color this year. Date on the back, incorporate 1902. And Amy's gonna read a letter from Joe Pilato. I said, Joe Pilato would be doing this next month, their next meeting, but Joe's like, hurry up and give out the cash, so. Uh, and when we give out the cash, whoever's here to accept it, if you don't mind, just come up here so we can just take a picture. Right, and um, I know Jackie's here from the Chamber of Commerce, Dan Key's here from. Yeah, I'll read them out. Okay, go Okay, ahead. ready? So, the Asbury Park Fishing Club held its 24th annual fishing flea market in Convention Hall this past weekend. The event attracted thousands of people with many continuing their Asbury experience with visits to local businesses throughout the city. This success for the Asbury Park Fishing Club could not have been accomplished without your exhaustive efforts, Mayor Moore. You and your council continue to endorse our organization in our effort to showcase the city of Asbury Park. Your support is deeply appreciated by our membership. Our thanks to Madison Marquette, especially Chris and his staff in arranging for the event to return to Convention Hall and more than 100 members of the Asbury Park Fishing Club who volunteered their time and energy to ensure the success of this weekend's event. As is the practice of our membership, proceeds from the flea market are donated to many local associations. As an expression of our commitment to Asbury Park, it is with great pride that I represent to the City Council the following checks to the organizations that directly benefit the citizens of our city. And just so everyone knows, not only is there, you know, almost four thousand dollars for organizations in Asbury Park, they then take another hundred they take another thousand dollars and donate it to organizations outside of Asbury Park. So a huge, huge thank you to Joe Pilato. Our club will host its fourth annual Deal Lake Carp Contest on April 17th, in which fourteen in which four hundred dollars in prize money will be awarded. So April 17th is the carp contest. All right. First recipient is the Asbury Park Little League in the amount of $1,500. Mm -hmm. Asbury Park VFW post 1333. The Asbury Park Boys and Girls Club in the amount of $500 and Big Brothers Big Sisters in the amount of $500. The Asbury Park... <laughs> We can, I'll go through the list and then just clap at the end for everyone. Um, Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce in the amount of $250, and I know we have Jackie here. The Fireman's Fund, $200, and Asbury Park PBA Toys for Tots, $200. Yeah. 
So again, let's thank Joey Pilato for doing this every year. It's a, it's a fantastic event and giving it back to the people and organizations in Esbury Park. Kudos to him. and the entire fishing club and it's just a great event and it's not like this is a $20 admission this is a $4 admission so with $4 admission we are able to give away $5,000 yeah. every penny taken in goes right back to the community so can I thank Joe Pilato his wife who puts up with Joe for like a month yeah. and a half of like is it going to rain is it going to this is it going to that and give me more Xanax I mean yeah. so <laughs> uh, I love Joey to death Council? Matters by the city attorney? I have no matters at this time. I know we did it on Monday night, not to bounce back to me, but I just want to thank everyone who put the St. Patrick's Day parade together. Yes. I know the chamber was part of it. Um, Garrett Guyberson Jr., you know, a number of people who put um, a great event together. We, we mentioned it Monday night, but it would. It, it should be mentioned both Monday and, and Wednesday sure. night. So thank you to all the volunteers, Eileen and everybody else who, who got that together. Okay. Matters by the city manager. Sorry, I didn't mean to skip you. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Um, on tonight's budget is, on tonight's agenda is resolution 2016-156 which is the introduction of the 2016 municipal budget. Um, as in every year, the, this is the introduced budget, which will change um, later on. There is a public hearing scheduled for April 13th. Changes will be made dependent on the final state aid and transitional aid numbers. Just for a quick overview, um, the valuation of the city went up $80 million from 15 to 16. The current valuation of the city is one billion two hundred ninety-five thousand three hundred twenty-nine. I'm sorry, one billion two hundred ninety-five million three hundred twenty-nine thousand five hundred dollars. Um, there was an increase in the average assessed value of a home from two hundred twenty-six thousand eight hundred thirty-one dollars to two hundred and forty six hundred and forty-six dollars. Um, that dictates a tax rate decrease of 0.012. Um, the new municipal tax rate based upon the introduced budget will be 1.288, which is a reduction from 1.300 from last year. The average municipal taxes on the average home of 
$3,646 will be $3,100.46. That is an increase of $151.65 from last year, um, when in 15 it was a $199 increase. And there's two things that you know, I, I would like to state. One, under the transitional aid program, taxes must increase a certain percentage every year based on, upon the formula. And two, under the utilities, we have three. There's beach, there's sewer, and um, parking utility. There is money available, but money cannot be transferred over to the general budget outside of just some general spending. So quite often you'll hear the city council or myself say, there's money in the parking uh, utility. That's money that is dedicated for use for parking purposes. Enforcement, maintenance of meters. We can't use it to buy a new golf cart or a new lawnmower. It's parking purposes only. Um, again, as I mentioned, we're going to have a public hearing, which will probably be postponed next month. Um, last year, the city adopted the budget in September. We're probably looking at an August, September adoption again. matters, Mr. Manager? Not at this time, Madam Clerk. Can I have a motion to open the public participation portion of the meeting? Move it. Second. Public oh, is it? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. I was a joke. Nobody got up. <laughs> the public is expected to conduct themselves in a proper manner. Any derogatory, abusive, or threatening statements will not be permitted. The chair will be immediately rule such conduct out of order and after appropriate warning may terminate any further comments from the speaker. Each speaker has three minutes to speak. When you do speak, please state your name and uh, address for the record. Is it on? Okay. Uh, Jill Bartlett, 611 Bangs Ave. Um, I want to voice my support for the Asbury Park Complete Streets Coalition. Um, their focus to push for achieving a more equitable street design and layout not only increases accessibility for many different users, but it promotes ease of access in all four cardinal directions. It's much easier to get north to south right now, and the collective conscious of Asbury Park agrees that there's a divide, be it perceived or real, um, that exists between east and west sides of the city, and I haven't ever heard anyone speak against working towards a more unified vision or feeling for Asbury Park. Um, in a big way, I believe that this concept is, if it's executed, uh, it will have a mutually beneficial positive psychological impact and really begin to bridge that divide. As residents and visitors can physically experience a more equitable, friendly streetscape that encourages east to west travel. In addition, it will make drivers more conscious of other users on the road. And promoting awareness of the needs and lives of other people is never a bad idea. Um, the last thing I'll say is that from what I understand in terms of streetscape design, um, you're only limited by your own imagination. I could be wrong. I could have misinformation, but if you need you know, some parking spaces to double as loading stations and during certain hours, or if you need the center lane to double as a fire lane, or you need protected bike lanes, or you don't need protected bike lanes, that, that can all be achieved, um, and it can be achieved with the state paying for it, even though they're increasing our taxes every year, or they require us to. So that's, that's it. I just wanted to lend my support for that. Thank you. Hi, my name is Danny McKee. I live on 7th Avenue in Asbury Park. Did I understand that correctly? There's now a recall movement against the mayor? Rumors. It's, it's Asbury Park. There's been rumors going around since November. Okay. So well, whether it is or the not. The papers haven't been filed yet. I don't know really how to express my, my, what I'm feeling right now, except that it, to say that it's disgusting. Whatever, you know, if that's true. The, uh, any uh, recall, as far as I'm concerned, unless there's evidence of some sort of criminal act, is, is absolutely outrageous. And I just wanted to say that. Second of all, uh, I heard that, well, I read it, that there's a skateboard park proposal. I think that's a tremendous idea. I don't know who's heading it up or who's doing it, whether it's a city or a private thing, but uh, whoever, whoever's doing this, it's, uh, I think it's a great idea for the kids and uh, hope, hope the city council can support that. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Hello, Felicia Simmons, Asbury Park, 7th Avenue. Hello, 
Um, I'm here for a couple reasons. First, um, I'm very, I was very happy to be in a parade um, this weekend. It was a very um, great and unifying parade. Um, I had a, a blast and um, enjoyed seeing everybody. And I also agree with Miss Jill about the safe streets. I think it's a wonderful idea to bridge the gaps between um, both sides of the town um, and a divide. I think it's a great thing. Um, and also, I'm also here about um, the business um, committee. I spoke to some of the board members earlier this week. Um, I think that is very important that when we have this committee um, and it's set up, that it reflects um, a diverse and complete view of the city. Um, I believe that all city business owners should be represented and um, have a voice in to say what goes on to the city. Asbury Park is a wonderful, diverse, loving, open city, and it, it has always been such. And um, so much such that any other town around it is not the same. It is no comparison to Asbury Park, how embracing we have been historically, continuously, and um, will continue to be. Also, I'd like to say about the safe streets, um, the school system is also uh, participating in the grants um, for the safe streets. Um, it's a slightly different grant, but it continues with bike lanes and safer routes to school and other things in that manner, which will be, it's, it will be huge for a whole com community to branch together and to come together as such. And also, I just think that the way the city is going now, that we need to continue as such. Not everything done is agreed upon, but it's a moving other city. And if we continue to move in a, a unified way, everybody on the board, everybody in the town, um, and all views be heard, then the city will continue to grow and benefit everybody in the city. And that's it. Thank you. Um, Jackie Pappas, Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce, as well as the Asbury Park St. Patrick's Day Parade Committee. So I'm speaking on behalf on the uh, parade committee. When I say thank you to the residents and business owners of the city of Asbury Park, the police department, our city council, um, and the fans of this great city, it was a wonderful day to show off our city. It was a wonderful day to welcome different groups and music and just the festival atmosphere that kicks off the spring season. It's a lot of hard work that goes into it, but really we had a lot of cooperation throughout the community to make it a success, and we'd like to say thank you. Thank you again. Good evening, my name is Kim Pirelli. I'm the Executive Director of Child Care Resources of Monmouth County. I'm here to introduce myself and to talk about the services that we provide. Um, child Care Resources is a child care resource and referral agency. There's an organization like ours that represents all um, 21 counties throughout the state. And what we do at Child Care Resources, we're located <coughs> in Neptune, is we help families um, with their child care needs in a variety of ways. We provide financial assistance for child care. Child care is very expensive. Um, we, in the city of Asbury Park, we serve 649 families that provides care for 1,265 children. Um, we also work with families to explore child care um, solutions to meet their new, unique needs, uh, perhaps with that families that work non-traditional hours. Um, where they need, um, they have unique care needs. Um, in an effort to help families access uh, quality and affordable child care, we also work with neighborhood-based, community-based child care programs through classroom training that we provide at our office and also on-site uh, coaching, mentoring in an effort to um, help the child care workforce and community-based child care programs uh, raise uh, the quality of their programs in an effort to improve outcomes for children. In the city of Asbury Park, we serve 45 um, child care programs that serve a variety of ages, infants through school age, in a variety of settings, including license-based child care um, centers, 
in your community, um, also before and after school programs, registered family child care homes, um, and summer camps. So um, I just wanted to introduce myself, let you know uh, what child care resources is doing in the community, and um, if, if we can be of service, and um, we would like you to contact our organization. Thank and you. And where are you located? We're located in Neptune okay. on Route 66. And maybe you could just give your contact info to Michael to give to our social service department in case they don't have it. I sure will. I did bring it. Okay, okay. great. Thank you and, very and much. please set up a meeting with the city manager so we can have a bigger and better dialogue. That would be great. I, I would really like to do that. Thank you so much for that offer. Please. Thank you. Signals. He'll pick up his own phone. <laughs> <laughs> People laugh about that. We never had the city manager who picks up his own phone. Hello, Hannah. You can also introduce yourself to him. Yeah, I know you should know that. <clears throat> uh, Marty Bradshaw from Burns Bradshaw Real Estate, 1508 Main Street. Um, I was at, here at the last meeting, and I asked about um, why uh, real <coughs> estate offices were now being charged a mercantile license fee. I just wondered if anything has been resolved on your end on that yet or what will happen yep. we looked in the code and we didn't see the exemption that you were talking about um, do you have the code with you because it might be the old code well I, I have the um, the list of, vi of uh, definitions I have the definition list right here I could pass it out I, I made a lot of copies okay can I get yeah, which from? definition list are you, is this the, the code that was recently adopted or the old, older code? Well, I was told um, by Cindy that the definitions list had not changed at all this time. Right, this but time if it was the old code, that's different. I wasn't here for the new code. They might have been totally removed. We looked in that definition after you came out. We could not find any definition well, in the new code. I wrote the chapter number at the top of the page. It's basic definitions and interpretations. There are, um, it says office, professional, shall mean any office used by one or more, more persons licensed or certified by state of New Jersey or any professional society or association with recognized status and national affiliations to provide a professional service to the public. Such professionals, such professions shall specifically include, number one, licensed medical practitioners, chiropractors, psychologists, real estate practitioners, accountants, financial or insurance practitioners, legal practitioners, planning, design, and engineering professionals, and travel consultants. So there's 12 of them. And real estate practitioners is specifically there as number four. So now that Michael and Cindy have it, I assume maybe they'll, they have what you're talking about. Maybe you guys could reach out to Marty after you read through, just so we're not spending the public mm -hmm. portion. This is the through. zoning section. This doesn't, this isn't applicable. The mercantile section is different. Mm -hmm. You're quoting chapter 30, which is the land development regulations. The mercantile definition is different. <coughs> mercantile does not list this definition. You're looking at the wrong section. Mm. Okay, so I would just follow up then with the question of why we're out of these 12 that are listed, real estate was the only one added to the mercantile list. Why weren't any of the others, any of the other 12 added to the mercantile? It's different sections of the code. The, the mercantile is under general licensing. Mm -hmm. This is zoning, completely different definitions. Mm. Okay. I just don't understand why, I mean, as a real estate broker, as all real estate offices have to get relicensed every two years, we have to take continuing education credits. 
uh, 12, a minimum of 12 continuing education credits every two years just to get our licenses renewed. We're, it's a very professional, you know, type of organization. I don't see how we could not be considered professional services. I mean, travel consultants, travel consultants weren't added to the, to the new mercantile license list. I think we're at least as professional as a travel, travel consultant, travel agency. Doesn't make sense. All I can say is it's different definitions in different sections of our code. And I understand what you're saying. What Cindy and I will do is we'll, we'll dig out an old code and see if it was in there. Mm -hmm. But this is a completely different definition in a different de section in the code. It, it's, the zoning code doesn't reference the mercantile license. The mercantile license doesn't reference the zoning code. Mm -hmm. there's, there's completely different codes. We'll look up the old code in the next couple days and we'll get back to you with that. But you're looking at the wrong code. I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Uh, uh, talking about uh, mercantile licenses, is there a percentage of licenses that were collected for 2016? That's one question. The other question is, uh, two weeks ago I asked you about board members on the, in the senior center. I didn't get a list of them yet. Who's on the board for our uh, condo there? Is there any taxpayers on that board? That's number two. Number three is, I'm shocked, I'm looking at the abstract book, and it says we have a $2 million surplus. That's pretty good. Uh, I mean, is that a true fact? I mean, it's in the abstract, so I don't know. Uh, I wanted to say something that I didn't say last uh, Monday night. I was thinking about the land that you're going to sell, uh, the uh, Kennedy Park or the Overlook Park, 25 feet of it for 200000 They just sold a lot around the corner from me, an undersized lot, and it went for three fifty. It doesn't have a water view. It's not on Lake Avenue. It's on Grand Avenue. So how do we sell a piece of property for $200,000 that's got lake view, and they've been using it for nothing anyway. They put gravel down and used our park, and we never got one penny out of that. So how does this happen that we're only going to get $200,000 for a piece of land that's got a lake view? And I understand there might go, uh, there's going to be a building put there. And that's my questions. Uh, okay. I'll start off with, I, I think the other night you came in late when Michael said follow-ups from past meeting and he explained the condominium association, so he'll go back to that. As far as the Overlook Park or the Kennedy Park, that was a deal struck six years ago before any of us were up here. That was a deal. I, I that know was, that. I'm not blaming well, you. No, but we can't get out of it. it it's, a, it's a binding contract where they had to put up $20,000 and $15,000 in the next two years and then close on it, which they want to close on. <laughs> And so we try to negotiate up, and we can't. It's a binding contract that we're forced to. Correct, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. And also, we did have the city's appraiser, Pamela Berdowski, do an independent review of the purchase price. And her analysis, based on the comparable sales, was that that price was in an acceptable range based on today's value. Not even looking back to when the contract was entered into in 2009, based on today's values, she uh, opined that it was reasonable. Right, Yvonne Ivan, Ivan Johnson, exactly the same thing you said, Rita, like three months ago when it came in front of us. So we went to our appraiser and she came back and she said, you know what, it's a, the price is a good price for the strip. It's a, it's a narrow strip. You couldn't sell it all by, its, by itself. As did the tax assessor. He weighed in on it as well and felt that it was reasonable. Right. Okay. Michael, you can take the rest of the questions. Uh, how about my uh, other questions? Michael's going to answer. The number of mercantiles that have been collected, that's Cindy's department. I'm sure you don't have it off the top Our of your head. Our quarterly report's not due until, it's not done until the end of March. Mm -hmm. We don't have a percentage because businesses change daily here. Um, but I'll have my, my quarterly report by mid-April. April, April 15th due. was the deadline. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you, I'll Madam Clerk. I'll have it Clark. April 1st. Nah. 
That's a Saturday, isn't it? <laughs> uh, concerning the senior center, your last question was that you missed on, on Monday was what is the $7,500 for? That's part of the operating and maintenance. Um, and then the board, from my review and the mayor's review of the ordinance that established it a few years ago, um, there is no representation. We're, I'm trying to track down another agreement that is mentioned in another part of the file. Um, and I'm also gonna be reaching out to Interfaith, who is the partner with us, to find out who is on the board and what they do because we're not quite sure either. So I'm gonna be talking to Interfaith and we're gonna go through some more paperwork as the days go on to, to figure that out. And what's their share? If ours is 7,500, they have two floors. Ours is 42%, theirs is 58%. It's a square footage breakdown of percentage of what it's owned. So theirs was, I think, like How much is this? Ours is, it was $31,500 for ours at 42%. I don't, bless you. I don't remember what theirs was. They have 58% of it. So they obviously pay more. Well, if they don't have a condo association, they better have one because I think the taxpayer has a right to be on that board. I don't and there should be more than one taxpayer on that board. I don't disagree with you. That's why we're trying to find out. Mm -hmm. I, this, was, this happened years ago. And the other thing, you better get a new appraiser because if a lot around the corner from me sold for 350, you're talking about a lakefront property. So I don't think that appraisal was right. And I don't understand why you can't amend things. You wasn't here. There was other people there. How come you have to stick to that contract if you wasn't sitting up there? You're sitting up there now. You have a right to open that contract up and get more money it, it and not even sell it in my estimation. It was a signed contract by both the city and the person purchasing it and it was totally legal. They had two stipulations. The first year they had to pay $20,000 in escrow. The second year I believe fifteen. They met all their stipulations and it just got delayed because of whatever and again it goes back six years and you can't get out of the legal document. Now, I mean, I know you're already upset. I'm going to upset you even more. The, just because I said it Monday and you weren't here. Mm -hmm. this, well, Ed. This, this Springwood Avenue agreement on the Condominium Association, I agree with you. And we're looking into it. It's for 35 years. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I, I mean, it's not your fault. I don't know why you didn't think so, it's you. No, but like when we find out what's going on, we tell you, and then we are looking into it. Uh, we have questions. There is no stipulation of who's on the board. We don't know. Uh, we see some maybe dual costs that we are talking to Interfaith and trying to resolve this. Okay. Okay. I'll ask again. Thank you. Okay. We pay 31.5. They pay 43.5. 43.5? Yes. We're looking into it, Rita. Okay. okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Uh, good evening. My name is uh, David Morton. I'm at 917 Fifth Avenue, Asbury Park. Uh, I have an issue. Uh, it's been an ongoing issue now, at least since uh, October. Uh, the there was a issuance of a uh, a CO to the property at 919 Fifth Avenue. Uh, that CO, in my estimate, should not have been issued. Uh, the hazards that are visible uh, would have indicated to a, uh, should have indicated to the code enforcement officer uh, that something should have been done prior to uh, folks going into that, uh, fact, on the property, period. Uh, since then, we've had a sewage spill uh, in which the landlord has, uh, in my estimation, retaliated against me because of the uh, involvement of, uh, well, my actions going down to the code enforcement officer or to the code enforcement office uh, several times, uh, raw sewage was dumped under my uh, daughter's window. Um, I, I guess, you know, given the limited uh, time. Uh, I, I, 
think I just want to state that you folks ask for people when they see something to say something. Now, there has to be uh, a matter of uh, honesty uh, coming out of our uh, various offices that uh, people who speak up are not retaliated against by issuing violations that, in my estimate again, were fraudulent on the base, and to allow young folks uh, to rent an apartment which clearly put their lives in danger. The uh, health department had, Monmouth County Health Department had to come out. Uh, they had to evacuate the building. And essentially, if it wasn't for uh, the discussions that I had on a Saturday uh, with the uh, manager of code enforcement and the assistant city manager who, who came out to see uh, the property, we might have had some really sick people who were in that building. So bottom line, uh, I'm not saying that this particular code enforcement officer uh, should be fired, but I certainly don't think that he should be in the code enforcement office. And I have uh, pictures and his write-off or sign-off abatement of, the, uh, of that particular property both uh, pictures that I shot this morning and uh, pictures of the ongoing issue. So if you'd like to see those, I'd be glad to give them to you. And Kevin, you have, you have Mr. Morton's contact? Yeah. Uh, I've been intimately involved in this over the last two weeks. Myself and the director, Mr. McEwing of Code Enforcement, have been trying to get out there. Um, we tried last Thursday and Friday, couldn't get our schedules combined, and then Mr. McEwing's been out sick the last three days. But I did see Rob a little bit on Monday. We're going to get out there. Um, I'm going to personally do the inspection and of the area and just write everything up, and that will lay a lot of this to rest. We just need to get out there. The sooner the better, because I know Mr. Morton's correct. This has been an ongoing problem at this one address which he's been addressing before you were here with yes. Tony Nuccio. And that's and why I know David emails me everything and I tell him to and I forward it to you, even though you respond, we have responded, but as soon as possible, we'd be deeply yes. appreciated and it's, it's necessary, so. Yes, and I, I want to thank Kevin and Rob McEwing. They both went out on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. Which Mr. Morton asked for, so because he didn't have to take a day off work yes. and he would be there to make sure it was actually being done, which David, thank you. And we are trying. It's maybe a little bit slow, but we're going to speed it up. Thank you. Tracy Rogers, Monroe Avenue. Uh, first, I want to congratulate uh, Jackie and her committee for the St. Patrick's Day Parade. It was fantastic. Um, that, is, that is what Asbury's <laughs> IC is really about, inclusive and everyone coming out and supporting. So I, I'm very happy. Um, <clears throat> one of the, my first question is about uh, the budget. Uh, how much is the city asking for in transitional aid? Uh, my second question, let me, uh, statement is on invisible landlords, which goes to what we were just talking about, and the issue of quality of life issues. And I know the mayor, as a responsible landlord, I mean owner of a property, does things to make sure his property is kept up. But you have people in this city that own property who don't maintain it, which costs the city in quality life issues, like snow removal, like uh, maintenance of their property. They're making substantial amounts of money because of this is a beach town. And it needs to be evaluated effectively with more code enforcement involvement. Now the Boca Code is being updated, but it should be a plan to retroactive get in there and make sure that all the properties are maintained and followed up on. Because what it does, that's the way you decrease your taxes, by making sure you're not going out paying for people who aren't doing what they're supposed to be doing, who don't live in the city, who make a substantial amount of money off the city, and don't care about the lives of the people that live in that building. Uh, my next thing, uh, 
is the abandoned properties, which the abandoned properties were just put out. Uh, I submitted to all the council people a plan that would show a community commitment to change how this, how, how we can affect uh, low, in, low income and moderate income families and putting a plan together that would really take, care, take advantage and get these abandoned properties taken care of and off, off the blight that they put on the city. So I hope we can all look at that plan and effectively get involved and work on it to get it done exponentially as possible. Crazy, I'm not getting the email. Did you did you send that one recently, or is that the one I already said I didn't get? That's the one you didn't get. Oh, okay. I, I, I was going to say because I, 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 okay, I, I just check it. it again. Yeah, but, no, yeah, no problem. No yeah. problem. Michael, the transitional aid amount is 1.25 million dollars. It's based on a formula of 85 percent of the previous allocation, which was 1.5 million. Uh, the budget does include an additional code enforcement officer, which is desperately needed. Um, and we should, thank you, Madam Clerk. We should also be introducing our capital budget in April, which includes the software that, that you mentioned on Monday for the code enforcement department. And concerning abandoned properties, um, the director, Rob McEwing, has been giving me probably twice a week updates that the list has been working. Um, there's a group that are interested in coming in to buy six to eight off of the properties. Um, regretfully, we don't have many of those properties on for tax title liens, which would give us some more power. Most of them are actually current in taxes. But there is a lot of interest on the abandoned properties. Um, so right now, from as you've been here, staff was supposed to recommend something to the city council about what our next steps are. But since there's been so much interest from the private sector side, right now the market's doing what it should be doing. We have people that are looking to purchase the property. And as the stipulations as buying that property to get it off the list, they must bring it up to code. So there's been a lot of movement in the last two weeks, three weeks about the, the, the abandoned property list. So things are working. They're working slowly. But there's a lot of interest in it right now. Well, right now, with spot blight, intimate domain, even if the property taxes are paid and they're on this list, the city can still take them and not buy them. And with the fact that the city is um, insufficient of its affordable housing and it does have $3 million sitting there, I think instead of selling them, because as you looked at the other side of town, with all the development is there, which is no low income, no moderate income, right now you sold out one side for the other. And I think you should look at revising that thought process. And if we need to sit down, I can make a presentation in front of the council in the next meeting to show you the ineffectiveness of what's going on on both sides. I'll do that. Thank you. Hello, um, my name is Mike Rispoli. Um, I run a project in New Jersey and here in Asbury Park called News Voices, uh, which aims to foster relationships between journalists and local community members. And um, I just want to personally invite the council and everyone here to an event next Wednesday, March 23rd at the high school from 6 to 8.30. Uh, the event is looking to bring together members of Asbury Park and members of the local media to talk about stories that are happening here at Asbury that need more attention, uh, and also trying to not just talk about problems, which often the media does, but also talk about solutions and ways that journalists and local community members can work together. Um, it's a participatory event. It's not a panel discussion, so anyone who comes, uh, you'll get a chance to meet local journalists, meet your neighbors, um, and listen to one another, share your story of Asbury Park, and hopefully be able to find ways that uh, members of the local media and community members can make Asbury Park uh, a little bit better. So the goal is to encourage open dialogue with residents and the media? Is it? I, I, yes. I'm just, um, I'm just trying to understand it better. Right. So um, it is a way to elevate voices uh, from the community into local journalism. Uh, it's often the case that residents don't feel like the media is ne uh, represents their reality in their reporting or only one side of what's happening. And so it's a way for community members to feel like they're being heard and for local journalists to find stories that are happening in the community that maybe they don't have the ability to find out themselves. Um, like I said, it's at the high school. 
um, a week from today on Wednesday, March 23rd from 6 to 8.30. Um, I would love for everyone here to come. Uh, I have more information as well if people want to see me afterwards. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks. Motion opposed. Move it. Second. All in favor? We're on now to acceptance of minutes. We have four sets this evening, February 27th, uh, 22nd, 2016 executive, February 22nd, 2016 workshop, February 24th, 2016 executive, and tw uh, February 24th, 2016 regular. Do you have a motion to accept those minutes? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. All right, we got a lot of consent agenda items this evening. Consent agenda, 2016-124, approving special events wedding applications as presented on March 14, 2016. 2016-125, resolution authorizing payment payroll in amount of $874,446.71. 2016-126, approving social affairs permit for the Asbury Park Chamber of Commerce for an event on April 21st, 2016. 2016-127, approving, so, approving social affairs permit for the center of Asbury Park, Inc. for an event on May 20th, 2016. 2016-128, approving catering permit for Enigma Restaurant doing business as Hotel Tides for an event on June 5th, 2016. 2016-130 resolution to credit sewer accounts for 408 7th Avenue. Another credit to sewer account, 2016-131 for 511 6th Avenue. 2016-132 resolution to credit sewer account for 608th Avenue. 2016-133 resolution to credit sewer account for deduct meters. 2016-134 resolution to cancel taxes for the City of Asbury Park owned properties. 2016-135 appointment recycling coordinator. 2016-136 resolution authorizing disposition of surplus property. 2016-137 authorizing the entering of a memorandum of understanding with the Environmental Shade Tree Commission. 2016-138 authorizing the entering of a memorandum of understanding with the Asbury Park Library Board Trustees. 2016-139, authorizing the entering of a memorandum of understanding with the Asbury Park Zoning Board of Adjustment. 2016-140, authorizing the execution of license agreement between the City of Asbury Park and Jersey Central Power and Light Company. And 2016-141, authorizing the City Manager to sign an agreement with Madison Marquette for the Easter pageant. Would anybody like any of those items removed from the consent agenda? No, but you would know, do <laughs> Have a motion to approve, please. Move it. Second. Council Michael Clayton. Oh, sorry. Well, I was just going to say, Michael, do you just want to say what a, so people understand the memo of understanding for the Tree Commission Library? Unless everybody understands what that is. Okay. So can you just spend two seconds explaining what that is? Under transitional aid, there is certain standards that we have to have such as raising taxes X amount of dollars. Um, all hiring, firing is approved by the state. For the first time in 2016, the state has amended their standard MOU, the Memorandum of Understanding, with transitional aid municipalities to include boards, commissions, and authorities which are independent but in and of, and of the city. So for example, the planning board, the zoning board, the library board, the environmental shade tree commission, and the housing authority, which were all created by the city, now actually have to hear, adhere to what we've been doing for years. That is various procurement methods, best practices, ethics. They have to do what we've had to do, and that's the first time in 2016. Right, we have a motion and a second. Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. On to individual resolutions, 2016-86, resolution authorizing the transfer of appropriations in the fiscal year 2015 budget to reserve for compensated absence trust fund. Can I have a motion to approve the resolution, please? Move it. 
Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-129, the resolution to permit the Asbury Park Fire Department to apply for the 2015 SAFER grant. Have a motion, please. Move it. Did we get that settled? No, but I think we got to move it first. Second. Second. Comments or questions? <laughs> what, what are we yeah. voting on? Yeah, didn't we make, are we going to make we changes to this? To yes. That's up to you. Yeah, yeah, and he has to have it at this meeting. So I think, Kevin, I know you're asking for five and, um, it, you know, in different circumstances, we'd love to, we'd love to approve five, but being financially prudent, we're, we're going to go for two. Just so everyone understands, the SAFER grant is for firefighters. They get their first two years. It is, and Kevin, you correct me if, if I say anything that's okay. wrong in this or I'm paraphrasing it incorrectly. Um, the SAFER grant pays the salaries. Um, for firefighters that the city hires for the first two years. Um, we have a, a number of firefighters that also just separate from this that are retiring. Um, we are gonna use the SAFER grant and and I think this council is gonna go for two, you know, respectfully, not your five, but two. So do we have to change that in the resolution? Uh, yes, uh, there would need to be a motion made to amend Resolution number 2016-129 to change the number from five to two. Well, and it's not necessarily, just to be clear, we're not necessarily changing from five to two would be replacements, which we, we can't do, so they would be replaced normally if there's retirees, and then there would be additionally two added to the added to the force through the safer grant. No, well, that's not what it just said, that's, that's not what, well, no. if I mischaracterize it, I apologize. I just want to make sure that if, in fact, you are going to amend this from the version that was in the packets, that we do a motion to amend and a second and a vote on that, however you want to characterize the amendment. So okay. I think you need to talk that out and make sure you're all on the same page as to what the okay. amendment should so, be. So we think that we could have two retirees this year. But so we're looking to retire the two from the safer grant. Can that be done? No. No, you can't. Yeah, no. We already no. went over. You can't, you can't do, replace you them. can't replace the two retirees from the safer grant. So, are you saying replace the two and hire two more and hire four, or are you just saying hire two? I'm saying that we're gonna, if we go ahead with, if, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin or Michael, if we go ahead with the safer grant in any way, shape, or form, and we get it for one, two, or three, we're then required to replace any retirees in the next year. Fine. So, so we're going to go for two. So you're going to go for two, and that's to replace the two that are supposedly They're retired. Too new. No, they would be too new. Too new? Two and by default, we have to replace the two. No, we don't have to do anything. If you go for the grant and you get it, you do. You have well, to maintain well, your force at 48. Right. So, yeah. so the 48 would go to 50 if we yeah. vote yes Correct. on this two. Well, right. I'm, I'm dead against that just because, we're, we're, number one, the money's not in the budget. Number two, we're not at the position that I'm not going to say that we don't need more men. We're not in the position that we can't afford more men or ladies at this time. We're out hopefully two years down the road when we're all the transitional aid. You know, I'd be more than willing to do this, but it was like in 2013, we were asked for a similar thing. And we said, no, we're not adding three more firemen to the payroll. And just because we can't afford it. As I said, Monday night, and I'll have the numbers wrong. If we had 48 last year, and we didn't spend a ton of overtime, which we didn't. We spent overtime, but we didn't exceed the budget amount. Why would we add 50 now? If two more to make it 50, knowing that we made it through 2015, I know calls have increased in the summertime, but they're like first aid calls mainly. mainly I don't think they're fire calls on the beach run. Uh, so as far as, I, and again, <coughs> love the fire department I'm a big supporter or anything but it's just like it, to me it's just fiscally irresponsible to be adding people when we're raising taxes and that's my, my opinion well I think when we have summers that are, are record-breaking with the number of people on the boardwalk and asking the fire department to respond to an ever-increasing you know growing population in the summer providing um, them two more firefighters with grants that we don't have to pay a nickel for for the next two years and their salaries start at like $30,000 after that 
you know, I don't think that's a hard ask. We the, the, had, we had how many people at the beach? I mean, the, the salaries, which, of thousands the salaries, of people at the which, beach. The, I'm sorry, if I cut you off. The salaries, and we had, you're right, we had a record beach year last year. We had 350,000 people on the beach, and we did it with 48. Now you're saying we need two more, and it could rain every weekend next year, this year. Uh, I, I just, again, I, guys, you, you tell me where you're finding the money. And don't say the state's paying for it, or the federal's paying for it. They are, but eventually, the taxpayers have to pick it up in future years. So then we have two years to budget the yeah. money. And then you've got to keep that number at 50 the rest of your life. Correct. Not the, not the rest no, of no, your no, life. No, because no, people can retire. Yeah, let's, not, let's not make it. No, no, I don't know. Because I was I was under the impression if we hired two through the safer, they were going to be the two replacements. So Not forever. No, that's what I, clar yeah, I, I tried to though. clarify earlier. There's 48. If we apply for a safer grant for two, that would bring us to 50. We would be locked into 50, even if those two firefighters retire, they'd have to be replaced. Right. And that wouldn't, they, they wouldn't be covered under the grant. Only the mm -hmm. two new people would be covered right. under the grant. Now, it's fully funded, uh, health care and salary is covered for two years. There's a three year performance period. The third year, the cost, you're still locked into that 50, but the third year, the cost is to be uh, completely borne by the city. One of the things I neglected to say, but just to clarify, because this is where I think John and I are getting confused. You don't, if you get the safer grant for two two years, the two, two to three year grant. What, what, it's a, it's a three-year three grant, grant funded okay. for two. You get you get the, the safer grant for three years. You have to keep the police department at 50 for fire those department. three years. Fire department. Fire department. Yes, fire yes, department. The, that is. For those three years, not for, not for 20 years. For those three years while you're those, receiving funds from the safer grant. For those three okay. years. If you, if you don't, there's. Penalties so that you're are putting prorated. the city on the hook for a year for, a year. for those two in three years. In the third year, you put them on the hook for. That's it. I yes. don't understand what you're saying. You can understand, John. The third okay. year, even though we, we have, have, have okay. we got less we got less, we got less police officers than we deal with. Mm -hmm. We got to look at it that way. Also. So listen, we take a vote and then you know. I, I just right. you know, and we we discuss this, but I do, would just like to add, uh, it came up if. We are awarded the grant, and the grant is, uh, we turn it, after we apply and are awarded, if we turn down, there is not a penalty. If we apply for other grants in the future, they'll, they'll question us on that. But if we have a uh, reasonable reason uh, why we decline the grant, which, you know, being financially strapped is certainly a, a reasonable answer, we would not be penalized for any future grants. Just keep one thing in mind. What we do for one, we have to do for the other. If the police department, we don't have to do that? Yes, I see you shaking your head. But if the police department come up with a, uh, say they want a grant, we're gonna have to abide by that also. Because and, they and talk and about faith, what's right or what's wrong, you know? And we already pulled the trigger on that one by going for an accreditation for the police department, which I'm all for, I mean, Go to the racetrack. I think I own a racehorse, but I can't find them. Uh, I play the lottery. I mean, I'm, I'm willing to bet dollars to donuts. Like this police accreditation report is going to say we need 120 police officers, and that's going to be one of the recommendations. So if you guys are just going to say, well, anything we get says we need this, and we're going to fund it, it's game over. So, so, so we're, Kevin's we're, asking for five. And we're not saying you can, we're not handing you five. So, I mean. I, but, I, but he's asking for three more than we two. had last year. Oh. Three, because we already hired one that I didn't think was needed. Okay. So three more. All right. That we didn't have last year in the busiest year ever. And we did not exceed our overtime. We did not, we weren't short at any fires that I know of. You did a great job. Your men do a great job. This is not, I am not anti-fire department. No, it's just like. I appreciate I'm, I'm, that, Mayor, right. but but I just need to clarify. Um, we're short every fire by nationally accepted best practices. And the police department's short every shift by nationally associated practices. Our DPW's short and our code department's short. So if we just want to, hey, you want to do an initiative and referendum and put this on the ballot that the taxpayers pay for it, I'll sign the initiative referendum. Do we want to raise taxes to hire 50 more employees? I mean, I have no problem with that, but you know, it's just like, 
I don't know where, and again, I'm not picking on the fire department when the police department comes in, and we're spending the $52,000 <coughs> for this Rogers group to do an accreditation, and it, the first thing they're gonna say is like, you need more police officers. And anybody wants to bet me on that, please, I'll give you 10 to one odds. So it's just like, unfortunately, we're dealt a lousy hand financially, and we have to try to juggle a budget, and I just can't, yeah, but like Amy said, everybody can vote. Yeah. yeah. We go from that. It is what it is. Thank you. So is someone making a motion to amend resolution 2016-129? And if so, if you could please um, <laughs> articulate how you want it. I make a motion revised. to amend it to say we are applying for two fi fire. What do we call officials? Fire, right now, firefighters. Right now, it, safer program. it reads um, that the city is authorized to make application to the safer program for two replacements of retiring firefighters and three additional firefighters. So That's how it two, currently reads. So strike that. And strike the three additional. Additional, two just additional. Strike the retirees. Strike, strike the retirees. Two additional firefighters. And second. So that. Oh, I'm sorry. So that amendment has been moved and seconded. We need to vote on the amendment. All Question. Right. Okay. Go ahead. So I'm just breaking it down. So that vote would mean we increase the fire department in the year 2016 by three members. Two members. Three. We hired somebody in February up above the 48. So you went from 48 to 49 to 50 to 51. Is that no, that we're at we're at 48 now. This would we're take going us to, to 50. Well, we're, how many were we at in uh, February? 14 and 15. In 15, and then we were at 47. We were at 47 and 15. Right, so we're increasing by three. Right. Well, well there was drag We're voting time. on two tonight. You got another one this year, you got another one this year. But we're only paying for two. I mean, the safer grant would pay for two if it's approved. That is correct, if it's approved. All right, so we have okay. a motion and a second on the floor to amend the resolution to apply just for two additional firefighters. Correct. All right, I'm going to do roll call unless there's any other question. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Abstain. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. No. Motion passes three to one. And now we need to vote on the resolution as it has been amended. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. No. Can he, he can't vote if he abstained on the sure amendment. Sure he can. Oh, yeah, he, he abstained can. on the yeah, amendment. Right. Okay. okay. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. No. Motion passes. Motion passes three to two. Thank you. Okay, I think we're you better all keep those overtime costs down now, Kevin. <laughs> resolution you better find the money in the budget now, Amy. <laughs> we just introduced a budget without money in it, so. We don't need money for two years. We don't need money for two years. Right. If they get the grant. If they get the grant. And if we get the grant and we say it's a bad decision, we can say forget it. No, it was three to two. Good point. Yeah. Why vote for all of it? Oh, that's a yes. That's a yes. All right. Resolution 2016-142, resolution authorizing the closing of beaches to the public and authorizing the issuance of seasonal and daily passes to allow access to the closed beaches. Have a motion, please. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? No. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-143, resolution authorizing the transfer of funds for the 4th of July dedicated trust fund to the recreation dedicated trust fund. Can I have a motion? Move it. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Council Member Clayton? Yes. Council Member Kendall? Yes. Council Member Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-144, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for 2016. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 
Resolution 2016-145, resolution authorizing the payment of bills in the amount of $2,579,442.02. Motion. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? That, um, I have a revised version of that, but yeah. actually it was $2,696,482. You're right. You are right. With the yellow. With the yellow. <laughs> so that's two million six ninety six four eighty two oh two. Motion is second and good. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2016-146, approval of purchase of body-worn cameras under state contract. Have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Uh, resolution 2016-147, authorizing the execution of agreement. The borough deal for the maintenance and repair of fire apparatus. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-148, authorizing the extension of transportation liquid sludge through May 27, 2017. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-149, resolution rejecting all bids for ocean outfall cleaning and diffuser repair. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Abstain. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-150, authorizing change order number one to the contract with Soden Electric, Inc. for boardwalk lighting, Asbury Park Waterfront Development Project. Have a motion? Move it. Have a second? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-151, a resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park, authorizing an escrow and funding agreement with APB Realty LLC for request for an amendment to the CD, CBD redevelopment plan. Can I have a motion? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-162, resolution of Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park, authorizing an escrow and funding agreement with 722 Madison Avenue Realty LLC, 208 Main Street Realty LLC, and 228 Main Street LL, uh, Realty LLC for the request of an amendment of the CBD redevelopment plan. Can I have a motion? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-153, appointing redevelopment councils and authorizing the execution of an agreement for professional services associated therewith. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Can I have a second? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Abstain. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-154, resolution in support of the City of Asbury Park taking action to fight global climate change. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Can I have a second? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2016-155, authorizing the uh, planting of beach grass. You do have a revised resolution in front of you tonight. Yeah, but I can't find it. Have a motion? Move, Move it. it. Second. Question. Question. Uh, I don't think it, the amended one addresses what we said Monday, does it? Yeah. 
I thought, yeah, we, it, I it's thought a, we said at the north end. It's amended to various locations in case you wanted to put them somewhere else. So you could put it, it the concern on Monday was that you felt that it stated along the entire beach. This just says various locations. So this could be down by it the It could be anywhere, yes, okay. but who, not the who, entire beach. Who chooses those locations? That would be whoever on the council wants to work with the littoral society. That's, I think it was the same way you guys did it last year, right? It, we, we, I thought we said North End. Last year we didn't pass the resolution. <laughs> okay. <laughs> last year I talked to Garrett and Joe, and we said we'll do it here. Robert went out and put the fence up, and they came and did it. So you can do so the same thing this I'm year. I'm happy but to, now you have resolution to do it. that with them this year as well. And now we have a resolution saying that. This just leaves it open that you can do it not just at the North End. You can do it at the power plant, like you said, on, on Monday. Right, I'm for the north end, I'm for the power plant, but I'm against it being, I'm just picking a beach. Third Avenue Beach where- it, We direct it. Where it becomes like Bradley Beach and yeah, no, you can't see, call. you can't see the ocean yeah. because the dunes and the beach grass are so high. I mean, you sit on the boardwalk and you don't see the ocean. It's our call where it goes. Who's call? City's call. Who's That's, the city? <laughs> right now it's gonna be Joe. <laughs> Joe working with give it to the me, beach staff. I think if you can see the ocean, the ocean can see you. So put it along the hole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll, I'll work now with Garrett and Joe to make sure they're all right with the spot, just extending the dune as we talked about on, okay. on Monday. Any other comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Hesitant, yes. <laughs> I trust you. All right, we're now on to ordinances. First reading, 2016-06. Ordinance to exceed the municipal budget appropriation limits and to establish a cap bank, according to NJSA 48, column 4-45.14. Can I have a motion to introduce? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for April 27, 2016. Ordinance 2016 07, ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 7, Authorities, Board, Commission, Committees, and Volunteers creating a new Section 2-59 Beach Utility. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 30th, 2016. Ordinance 2016-08, approving and adopting an amendment to the Central Business Dist District Redevelopment Plan relating to the subdivision of Overlook Park. Can I have a uh, motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Public hearing is scheduled for March 30th, 2016. Ordinance 2016-09, Ordinance of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park, authorizing the sale of certain real property, which is no longer needed for public use, Block 1003, Lot 68, 14, 13 and a half Springwood Avenue. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Question. Question. Is this the corrected address? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 30th, 2016. Ordinance 2016 10, an ordinance authorizing the sale of certain real property located at 1506 Park Avenue, Block 3603, Lot 19, to the Asbury Park Board of Education. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Warner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing is scheduled for March 30th, 2016. Ordinance 2016-11, an ordinance amending and supplementing Section 7-20 entitled One Way Streets to Chapter 7 Traffic of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Comments or questions? This is the one we just got tonight, right? Yes. Okay. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor we're, and we're just introducing. Just Sorry. introducing. Mayor Moore? Yes. 
<coughs> public hearing is scheduled for March 30th, 2016. We're on to second uh, reading, public hearing, ordinance 2016-04, an ordinance amending and supplementing chapter seven traffic section 7-7 parking by adding subsection 7-7.5, responsibilities for removal of snow and ice of the code of the city of Asbury Park. I have a motion to open ordinance 2016-04 to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Good evening, <clears throat> Pam Lambertson. Um, I know you're pretty thorough on this, Michael, but I just wanted to make sure in this particular ordinance, what we discovered in rewriting the administrative code was that sections like this uh, pre uh, present a conflict for, tra for um, court. And um, I, I'm assuming you took care of this, but uh, the police officers have pre-printed ticket books that have code numbers in them, and then the municipal court system also has hard-coded into their um, system where you pay your fine certain um, references like 7-7.5. So I'm assuming that you, if this is a new number, it has the traffic court, the, you know, the little booth, the traffic court place has to be brought up to date. The police wrote this? Um, so I would assume yes, but also in a couple of months we're going to be going to um, digital ticketing, and I don't believe we're going to be writing any snow and ice removal, hopefully over the summer. So we do have some time to get that into the court system. Okay. Thank you. Motion to close the public portion for Ordinance 2016-04. Move it. Move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Motion to adopt 2016-04. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember uh, Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warner. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Ordinance 2016-05, an ordinance amending and supplementing Chapter 4, General Licensing, Section 4-25, Licensing and Towing Businesses of the Code of the City of Asbury Park, New Jersey. I have a motion to open Ordinance 2016-05 to the public. Move it. Second. All in favor? Motion to close. This ordinance amends the um, provisions dealing with towing in the city and indicates that um, those who are um, going to be towing have to be located, they have to have a location within a 10 mile radius of the city. Previously, um, we used to require that they must be located within the boundaries of the city of Asbury Park, and this was a recommendation made by the police department that that be changed. Um, also, there's a change to the fee uh, relating to towing and storage fees and charges. And there was something else relating to when we had the storm and we couldn't get in touch with the towers, that, that's been worked in here as well. Um, that they would ensure that they would have uh, vehicles that would be accessible with in specified hours. So, uh, are you approving some towing? Which is, I know we need it, but I happen to see on the bill resolution where we paid towing to a, um, to a, I think his name was Bennett. Bennett's and Rich, we have two towing companies now, Bennett's and Rich's Auto Towing, and it's, it's not enough during a snowstorm. So the old ordinance said you had to be in Asbury Park. There's nobody else in Asbury Park and even one of the gentlemen's towing company isn't zoned for towing. So we had a problem there with zoning. So we're expanding the radius where we can get other towing corporations to bid to services. And it was dearly needed during the past winter snowstorm. Okay. So I, I mean, you really need towing. There's been a box truck on my street for a year that nobody could tow it. Well, get, okay. Hmm? What? Okay, we'll look into that tomorrow. 508 8th Avenue. Yeah. Okay, so that's a easy big, to look into a big tomorrow. 
That, uh, well, there's a lot of trucks on our streets, but um, you know that's a big one. Okay. Okay. Next week it's We'll look into that tomorrow. Yeah. Big to close. Thank you. All in favor? All opposed. Motion to adopt ordinance 2016-05. Move it. Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Councilmember Warren. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. We're now on to introduction of the 2016 municipal budget. Resolution 2016-156, introduction of the 2016 municipal budget. We have a motion to introduce. Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Councilmember Werner? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. At this time, public hearing is scheduled for April 27, 2016. Unless there's any other comments, a motion to adjourn, please. Move it. Second. All in favor? All opposed.